So today I wanted to talk to you about the pinhole camera. Now, a lot of people, like I said, it's a, it's a an instrument, the a tool that was used years ago, and basically um, it comes out of the uh, camera obscura. And so, a camera obscura, if it, what it's hard it's hard to explain without some some drawings or something like that, but um, basically, a camera, a camera, ex, ex, I'm sorry, a camera obscura is a, either a box, it could be a room, it could be any type of vessel, and it has a hole in it, and it could be on the side, it could be on the top, it, um, and it lets light in. And when the light comes in, because it's going through a tiny hole, it actually changes the direction. So it, it creates an X. So it comes in through the hole and it crosses over. So your image is going to be reversed. And it's, it's kind of neat to see that. So if any of you are in North Carolina at the North Carolina Museum of Art, um, let me check, make sure I get his name right. Chris Drury, back in 2003, built a stone and wood structure, a big round camera obscura out on the grounds of the North Carolina Museum of Art in Raleigh. And it's, it's really cool. It's, it's a neat structure in itself. But um, <laughs> so Nancy will tell you that she had kind of a, a, I don't know, a bad experience maybe there because she went, I think, when it was pretty warm outside. And the room you go in and it, it was full of those like hairy, camel crickets, <laughs> which we, neither one of us like. Anyway, so I would suggest that if you're going to go to the, go to the North Carolina Museum of Art and see the camera obscura, that you would um, go during the winter time so you don't have to deal with, with those little crickets. But anyways, so yeah, but, if, but a, a pinhole camera can be, uh, like I said, it can be, like this one, it was a big room. It's a big stone building. Or structure of like a hut and it has a hole in the top and then you can have a wooden box with a hole you could have any other type of vessel with a small hole in it so the reason they're called pinholes is because they have a little tiny hole and on a regular camera the little hole is going to be the um hi maria glad you could join us <laughs> Uh, so uh, the pinhole, the little hole in the camera itself is the aperture. So even on a regular, like a fancy digital camera on your cell phone, um, you know, on a, a film camera, the hole that's coming into the, the lens of your camera is called the aperture. So on most cameras, like your digital camera, camera, the, um, the aperture opens and closes. So it can get bigger to let more light in, it's, or it can get really tiny. So it, depending on what um, the distance and, and different circumstances, you would set your aperture, you would change the aperture depending on how much light you want to come into the camera. So on a pinhole camera, you have, like I said, if it's a room with a hole in the roof or a box with just a little hole in it, that aperture is not going to change. So you can't uh, adjust that size, okay? So um, I'll back up a little bit. So yesterday, John and my friend Scott and I, we went out on a little camera shoot, and I did a blog about that, and I put some pictures up, and it is um, liquidamberstudio.blogspot.com, and we did a little photo shoot out of this old... Uh, train yard and so it was really cool because there's like all these old rusted trains and machinery that we had no idea what it was for <laughs> so not I don't think any of us are real big train buffs but it, it was really cool to see these big monstrous machines um, and they're all rusted and, and decaying and things like that and some of them had plants growing out of them and all so so I took my cell phone and I took my digital camera and Scott had his camera and John took, well he took his digital camera but he also took three pinholes with him. So when you say, why would you have three pinholes? 
because a pinhole camera, like I said, one, you can't change the aperture, so you have one distance. The other thing is, you're not changing the film, or you do have to change the film for every single shot. So it's not like you have a roll of film in the camera, or you have, um, you know, it's not digital, so it's not saving the information anywhere. You have literally a piece of paper. So I want to show you, this is, um, so actually let me say, so back in, um, oh, I don't know, 15 years ago, when I was in art school, uh, I took a class at Meredith College, and we, I took, I took a pinhole, a camera class, and we had to make a pinhole camera. And this is my fancy pinhole camera. So this is the uh, cream-filled pirouette chocolate hazelnut <laughs> cookies. <laughs> anyway, so it's a metal can, and it's just, it's just a can. And so uh, you can take any, like I said, any vessel, a box, a um, cylinders work great. We, we really kind of like the cylinder because you get some um, distortion and it, it makes for a more, I think, a more artistic um, picture. So anyway, so this is, this is my camera, fancy camera. So what you do is, um, like I said, first you have to have a little hole in your camera. And let's see if I can get this tape off of here. So this is just um, electrical, electrical tape. So it's a black plastic electrical tape. And this is my, this is my lens cover. So just like on a regular camera, when you're going to take a picture, you quickly, you press the shutter, and I mean, you press the button and the shutter opens. So this is my shutter right here. It's a piece of tape. And open that up. And there's a little tiny hole. And you probably, uh, it probably won't show up on the, on the um, phone here. But anyway, so there's a little tiny hole right here. So that is my aperture right there. And so, so what happens is you got to put, a piece of paper in there. So you would put your, say this is a blank piece of paper that has a photo emulsion on it. So it is a photographic paper that you would like develop your pictures on. And you have to do this in the dark room. So this has to be, it, you can have a safe light, but um, it you can't have any regular light, obviously, because it would ruin the, uh, oh good, you can see it. Yeah, sometimes this, this thing, you don't, you don't know what's in focus or not, but so if this was a blank piece of photographic paper, you would put this in here. Sorry, I'm do this. So you put this in here, and so the reason I said about the curved and you get distortion is because your your paper is curling around, and like I said, that kind of just adds to the you know to the image. So we like to do you know experimental. Obviously, this is experimental, so we like to do experimental. Um, photography and or, or alternative photography so you have this curved piece of paper and you put that in there this was a little too big for this uh, this one wasn't cut for this uh, this camera anyway see but you could see like this would go in here and then you would put the top on and that would all be done in the dark room and as you notice what's it going on? so as you notice um, so I have I mean the electrical tape along the seams and um, there was some little, I don't know what happened there, but so I put, put it along the seams to, so no light could get in. And then the inside was spray painted black just with the flat black spray paint. And so you, it has to be um, light tight. You can't have any light seeping in there. You want all the light to come in through that hole when you open up that piece of tape <laughs> when you open up your shutter. So anyway, so in the dark room, you get your paper in there and you seal it up, make sure this is all closed up nice and tight. And then you, when you go out to take a picture, you only have one shot, right? So, so, so it really depends and it's a lot of experimentation, but that's the, that's the fun of it, you know? So it, it's just fun trying to figure out all these different little nuances of the pinhole. So, um, like I said, that little that little dot, that little uh, aperture, the hole in the can, you would set that directly in front of the, 
the subject that you want to photograph. So <laughs> what's really crazy is you're not going to see many pinhole photographs of an animal, like a bird or a dog or, or anything like that, a child even. Anybody that's going to move or anything that's going to move. So even people you typically don't see because you have to hold the pose for um, as long as your exposure time. Now, this gets, I don't want to get all technical, but anyways, but the, but you know, you would have a light meter and you would check how bright it is where your subject is. And then you would determine how many f-stops that you would keep that open for. And what's, if you, so this really only works in, in daylight, in sunlight. So it won't work with the, um, regular lights in your house or even a, an intense spotlight. And the reason that is, is because photographic paper only works with, uh, blue light. It doesn't, and that's why it, it's on the blue side of the spectrum. And that's why our red safe light is okay to work with in your dark room. But, um, so all of these lights that we have in our house, um, they're, they're not the right kind of light. So you can try a blue spectrum light, but it, your exposure time is going to be really long. So we were experimenting and we did an exposure uh, inside with spotlights. We had four spotlights, I think, on and held the pose for 20 minutes. And you talk about a long pose. Um, so holding it for 20 minutes, and when we developed the paper, it was very, it was so underexposed. There was a few little lines. You could see it just starting. So, but the problem is for every f-stop that you have, it, the time doubles. So you, the next f-stop would go from 20 minutes to 40 minutes. So it's, it's kind of crazy, but it, it's a lot of technical stuff that, I'm, like I said, I'm not going to get into. But, so one thing that I want to say is that um, we use photographic paper in these. Like I said, it's the same paper that you would, um, you know, print a photograph on in your dark room. And, uh, this wasn't a good one here, but, so you can use um, film. So some of the pinhole cameras that they have out um, or, I mean, or you can make, <laughs> um, use uh, photographic film, just like regular film from your camera. And so what you do is you cut one square, like if you have two and a quarter by two and a quarter inch film, you would just cut one of those squares and put that into your camera, into your pinhole camera. And then, um, you would expose it just like I was explaining. And then you would take that and you would develop that in the dark room. Now, when you're using the film, it comes out much crisper because film is a much better material than the paper. The paper kind of has a fuzziness to it. But again, that's part of the artistic um, part of it. <laughs> so, um, so when, but just like I said, the negative, the plastic negatives that you use in here is a negative. So the image is going to be wherever it's light is going to be dark and wherever it's dark is going to be light. It's going to be the opposite. So when you do a negative, it's kind of, uh, so this one, I don't know if you can see here, but this was of our, one of our, this is of our studio. And so wherever it's dark, so the steps, this was in bright sunlight. So the steps were actually a really light color. And then, um, you can see the sky looks black, so the that was actually, you know, it's in the middle of the day, so that would be really light. So it's this is the negative. This was what was in the pinhole when we took the picture. And then you you have to take this out and you develop it just like you would develop a picture. So you have to go through the whole process of, hey Jamie, <laughs> you have to um, go through the whole process of developing the paper. So to get your negative and there's about four different ways that you can go from the negative to a positive. And one is what's called a contact print. And basically 
you would just be sticking this down on a piece of photographic paper. You you know, just stick it down there, put a piece of glass, put the light through it, and when it shines through, it's creating the opposite. So, so you're going from a negative to a positive. So that, again, you're going from a little bit fuzzy to a little bit fuzzier. <laughs> so um, it's, not, it's not such an... Um, if people want like a super crisp uh, photograph, that's not going to happen. Not with pinholes. So this is, like I said, again, I, I keep stressing the fact that this is a very artistic expression of photography. It's not just pointing and shooting with your digital camera, which I love, uh, you know, so I mean, I, I, I'm not knocking digital cameras at all, but um, this is just a different way to express yourself. So, but so this was, again, I'm going to show you that again. So this is the, the negative that we did of the little of the studio. And so the black is white and the white is black. So that's the negative. And then this one is the positive. So we created, then did the contact print and did a positive. So you can see now that the steps are now white, the sky is now white, and then the trees are black. So again, it created the positive of that image. So it's, um, it's, it's pretty neat, but again, I'm going to show, I don't know if you can see it so well in this one, but, um, I don't know if it's better on the negative or the positive, but I'll show you this negative. So it really bows because remember I said in the can, in our camera here, that it, the paper's curved. So when the image is being brought in through the aperture and flipping upside down, you're getting all this distortion and curvature. So, so you have to keep that in mind that things are not going to be straight. You're going to have this bowing effect on each side. So that's one, that's a, a, a still object. Obviously, buildings and, you know, things like that are great to take pictures of, particularly when you're starting because they're not going to move. You know, you don't have any movement. Now, the trees will be a little fuzzy because they're sitting there, and you know, flowing in the wind. So even like if you're going to try to do a flower or something like that, you have to remember that it's, it's going to be sitting there moving slightly out in the breeze and it's going to come out really fuzzy. So something stationary is what you need. Um, so here's one. So John always works with the figure. He doesn't, he doesn't like buildings and so much as like, he, he doesn't like inanimate objects. <laughs> so he, he, all his photography is mostly with the figure. So he really stresses of having, uh, he, he's not so much into portraits. He doesn't really care about a portrait. It's not who the person is. It's just using the body in a, in a photograph. So it could be their back. It could be, you know, their faces hidden. It's just another element in the surroundings. So this was a test. This is um, back when we first kind of uh, were playing around outside with these. But so this is this is me because <laughs> I'm the only other person here. <laughs> so um, so this is me, and as you can see, this is the negative, and this is so where it's white is going to be black, and where it's black is going to be white. So um, the, it, it's a it's just a really interesting you know, look <laughs> to a negative, but you recognize most negatives like as the film. And then here's the positive. So, um, I was wearing a black and white dress. High contrast is really important with, um, uh, with pinholes because you need, it's mostly just black and white. You don't get a, you do get some grays like my arm and my hair or whatever. You get, you get some gray, but high contrast is really important because it's already distorted, and so those black and white make for nice sharp colors. So that's that one. So I do want to point out, so this is another pinhole. So like I said, so each time you do one, you only get one chance. You know, you have to, you have your piece of paper, you take a picture, you go develop it. Well, it's better if you have number of cameras, you know, all different sizes and shapes and whatever that you can um, work with and take with you when you go to do a shoot. So like I said, John took three of them out to the, to the, um, 
railroad station and it, it, it um, you know, it's kind of cumbersome. He had a backpack and put them all in there, but you know, and plus you want to keep them light tight. So uh, again, this one, I'm not sure what, it, oh, I think it was a whiskey or scotch. Um, yeah, it was a, uh, yeah, it's a scotch, it's a scotch uh, cardboard container. <laughs> so this one, um, again, got spray painted all over. It needs a little help. I think we missed some spots. And so, so right here, it, it has a light coating and it probably needs to be painted again because we, we're getting a little bit of light leak, I think, on this one. But um, so after you put your paper in, and then actually I should have said this, then you got to tape up your seals with the electrical tape. So here on this one, it's really hard to see, but this is my aperture, my, my shutter um, cover, <laughs> my shutter. And then let's see if I can see this because it's all black. So, and when I open this one up, there's my little aperture that we talked about. So that's the little aperture right there. So we've been experimenting with different size uh, vessels for our pinholes. So um, I think this one actually seems to be the best. We it, it does have a little bit of light leak, I think, but. This one seems to be about the best that we've discovered. This one's probably the next best. That's why I picked these two. Um, we have one that's really tiny, and then we have one that's really big. And what we're learning is, is that the smaller the vessel, the smaller in diameter the vessel is, is that you don't need as much light. So almost every time those are becoming overexposed. The big ones, because they're such a big vessel, take more light, so they're becoming underexposed. So these kind of are both, both about the same diameter. Um, this one's longer, but this, these two seem to be a good, a good size. So, um, but again, it also depends on how close you are to your subject, how much, if it's sunny, if it's cloudy, uh, etc. So anyway, so th that's kind of, uh, um, the general idea behind a fin hole. And so I will say that uh, it, it's kind of interesting because with modern technology, you can go on the internet, you can buy a pinhole camera. Um, of course, they're not as fun as making your own and you don't really have the control over it, of what you get, but um, they do sell pinhole cameras. Uh, most of them are wooden boxes and they are made for film that you would use instead of the paper. And then now they have what's a pinhole lens for your regular SLR camera. So, which is crazy because that's kind of cheating, I think. Um, <laughs> so I think that, I think that you really uh, kind of are taking away that artistic side of, of the whole idea behind the pinhole it, to use one of those. I mean, it, they come out very sharp and crisp because one, they're a controlled focal length, a controlled aperture. Um, and you're working on film, and those you can do um, with a reel of film versus just the one at a time, like the box cameras or the homemade pinhole cameras. So those, um, I don't know, they, they're just not quite the same. But if you Google uh, pinhole images, you don't know what's coming up. You don't know if they're using one of these, if they're using a um, one on film, the single film use ones, or they're using the roll, like the lens on the camera one. So, but kind of the way you can tell is one is pretty it's partially the distortion, but also like the fuzziness or the crispness, because if it's on film, it's gonna be a lot crisper than on paper. And if it's super like, like you're getting tons of, um, distance, you know, you get the clear image up front and then the clear image in the back, that's almost positively going to be on film because that's not going to happen on paper. So anyway, so I hope you enjoyed this. And um, if you have any questions, so John is going to be teaching a course on this and it's um, still a, a ways to go in development, but just I just wanted to give you a little overview of what it's about and what we've been doing with this and um, um, but I just want to say thank you for joining me today and um, I look forward to hearing from you guys and let me know what you're working on this week and um, I'll see you next week bye